next compound you write down hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide h2o2 <laughs> Preparation from from barium peroxide. Preparation from barium peroxide. Bio. Write down. Hydrated barium peroxide. Ba hydrated barium peroxide reacts with dilute H two SO four to form hydrogen peroxide. This is the reaction. Okay. Once they ask this question, we don't use here. Anhydrous form of this we do not use. Barium peroxide. Anhydrous form we do not use. Okay. So write down the next line here. Anhydrous barium peroxide. Anhydrous barium peroxide forms a protective layer of barium sulfate. Anhydrous barium peroxide forms a protective layer of barium sulfate on barium peroxide, and hence the further reaction is not possible. Anhydrous barium peroxide forms a protective layer of barium sulfate on barium peroxide, hence. The further reaction is not possible. So, so barium sulfate is soluble in water. Yes, this so forms right it get dissolved okay. and hence it won't accumulate on the surface. Okay. Next, write down the structure of this. The structure of H two O two is open book structure. Okay. It is an open book structure and it is something like this. See this here. Oxygen has oxygen has two lone pairs. The bond length is L1. This is L2 and this is L3. The bond angle here is 97 degree. This is also 97 degree. <laughs> It was lost in chicken. I think it's 97. Which book? Send me a text. What are these? He said the opinion. Show me the book. 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 The open book structure is this. Suppose this is the oxygen. Here we will have one oxygen and another oxygen is this. So this oxygen, this bond is 90 degree, right? But since the bond angle is 97 or 100, whatever you say. So this oxygen, this oxygen and hydrogen bond is something like this. It goes this way, and this oxygen and hydrogen bond is like this. Okay. So this looks like. Open book. नहीं दिख रहा है क्योंकि open book. ठीक है? So this is an open book structure, non-planar structure. Right? It is a non-planar structure. Write down. Non-planar. Which bond length is more here? L1 or L2? Thirty-seven. Ah, thirty-seven. 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 रिपल्शन राइट लोन पेयर लोन पेयर रिपेल इच अदर राइट एल वन इज मोर देन एल टू इज अवेशन बॉन्ड लेंथ रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन एल वन इज अराउंड वन पॉइंट फोर एट एंड एल टू इज 
Point nine seven. Okay. Can you draw the orbital diagram of H two O two? Tell me this oxygen oxygen bond forms. What are the orbital overlap here? Yes, draw the structures. This is hydrogen atom, sp3, sp3 overlap, this one is sp3, s overlap, and this one is also sp3. Okay, one last thing we'll discuss here. Three different types of uh, forms of hydrogen we have. First, we write down nascent hydrogen. Just you have to memorize this. Write on first. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. At the moment of formation. At the moment of formation, known as nascent hydrogen, it is more reactive than ordinary hydrogen. Generally forms at ordinary means normal temperature, not at very high temperature. Uh, the most important property is it is less. It has less reducing power. It has less reducing power. The second one is atomic hydrogen. Wait, atomic hydrogen, this forms at normal temperature, generally at lesser temperature. Atomic hydrogen forms at relatively higher temperature. So right now it forms at higher temperature. So when, like nascent at the moment of formation, at lower temperature, when the hydrogen gas passes through an, an electric arc, at that time it dis dissociates into its atomic form. That is atomic hydrogen. Higher but nascent hydrogen, if you reduce the temperature of normal hydrogen, you reach nascent hydrogen. Yes, it is possible at a lower temperature. So is it? What is it? See, hydrogen. see, it's like like just one state. So you know, uh, like if you have nascent hydrogen, well, hydrogen is forming, right? So hydrogen forms and then it converts into atomic hydrogen. Just the moment where the atomic hydrogen is forming, before that only the state of hydrogen, whatever, yeah, that is the nascent hydrogen. So is it atomic hydrogen at high temperature? No, low temperature. Normal temperature basically. Comparatively here we have higher temperature. This forms when you have H2 gas, suppose hydrogen gas, it passes through an electric arc. Electric arc, higher temperature, this converts into atomic hydrogen. Atomic hydrogen. Okay? This has more reducing power than this. So, what does nascent hydrogen look like? How, how is it? It is hydrogen only. How is it different? Like, apart from the temperature at which it's present, how. Why does it have a it has see it has very less tendency to lose electron. Why? See obviously see it's just the game of temperature that is that is it. So the higher temperature, hydrogen has more tendency to lose electron because temperature high, the electron present in the orbital, right? It has 
more tendency to go out because the energy of the electron is more. But then, if it's just the temperature thing, it's not hydrogen's fault. So why are we classifying it as <laughs> is it significant enough for the reaction? See, they're reducing property, like one of the properties, reducing property. Yes. It's different yes. for the two hydrogen. So, but that's just the temperature. So, is yeah, so that's what, at one particular normal temperature, its property is different than this. Right? Means the atom, hydrogen atom we have, its property is getting changed when you change the temperature. So at different different states, we have defined the two different types of hydrogen. So based on temperature, the reactions they undergo also change. Well, obviously, because the electron, the density to release electron for nascent hydrogen is lesser than to that of atomic hydrogen. Right? So generally at higher temperature required for nascent hydrogen to take part. But for reaction, generally we take atomic hydrogen. Normal hydrogen. Okay? So this is at relatively higher temperature and it has more reducing power. More reducing power for atomic hydrogen. Once they have asked comparison of reducing nature of these two hydrogen. So reducing property you must remember. The last one is, write down the last one, the third one is ortho and para hydrogen. Ortho and para hydrogen. Ortho and para hydrogen. In a hydrogen molecule, The hydrogen molecule, when both proton, two protons are there in the hydrogen molecule, so when both protons spins in the same direction, ortho, it spins in the same direction, then it is known as ortho hydrogen. So it says spin. Do you mean like spin? Like proton. Spin? Proton rotates along its own around its own axis, right? Yeah, around its axis. So if it is same direction, then it is ortho. If it is opposite direction, then para. Right. So why does it rotate about its own axis? Protons always rotates around its axis. You. Yes. Always rotates around its axis. This why, why electron rotates them? So because electrons, they have to otherwise it will fall, but protons have no power fall. Yes, so, see, it's around the neutral. It's around the proton. This guy is going to be access that way. So this will rotate. No, yeah, this is very light particle. So very, with very small amount of energy, it can move. Right. So that's why it rotates around its axis. Continue. So same like direction as ortho, different is ha, opposite. So ortho is when proton spins are same, and when the spin of the proton is in opposite direction, it is called as para hydrogen. Ordinary hydrogen. <laughs> Ordinary hydrogen has 75% ortho and 25% para. This is the observation. In fact, 75% ortho and rest 25% is para. This is it for the chapter. Okay. NCRT just go through few reaction, few properties of hydrogen. Okay, you just have to you know go through with NCRT. That is it.